Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So things look a little different here today, and that is because I'm doing the makeup and books tag. So that is why I look like this. I'm not like a makeup guru by any means, so we're gonna start this video with me saying that I'm probably gonna do something wrong, and if you know anything about makeup, it's probably gonna piss you off, and I'm sorry. This is just my method. I'm, I'm not really that great at makeup, but I guess it's a prerequisite for this tag, and it sounded fun, so this is what we're gonna do. Uh, the first question is primer, pick a book, that left a lasting impression on you. I don't use primer, so I'm just going to answer the question, I guess. Or at least I'm going to think about the question because I really, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> a lasting impression. Does this just mean like something that I think about still all the time? I feel like my answer is going to be cheaty because like, I just finished reading it, so obviously it's going to be on my mind. Alright, I'm gonna give multiple answers. I'm going to say Words of Radiance because I have not stopped thinking about Words of Radiance since I put it down in November, um, and I needed to read other things before I could move on to Oathbringer, so, like, that's the only reason I haven't moved on yet, but I guess Words of Radiance is, like, my current answer, but if I were to give a real answer, I guess I would say Illuminae. Illuminae is like one of those books that I loved it when I read it and I still love it and like every couple of months, not even, like every month or so, it pops up again on a news feed or something and I'm immediately like, oh man, I really want to reread that. And like, I, I don't actually get to it, but like, I really want to. So that's enough of that. I am going to put on some foundation and try and fix this, which is step two, I guess. So my foundation, I use Lime Life by Alcone. I had a coworker that sold this and it's like wax-based foundation. I really, really like it. It's not too heavy coverage, which I hate that like oily caked on feeling. Um, I don't really wear foundation regularly anyway. I only ever wear, honestly, foundation in videos and for special events and stuff. So yeah, I can literally make this last me like two years, which is way past the expiration date for makeup, but we're not going to talk about that. It's fine. It's all fine. Okay, uh, so for foundation, the question is your favorite book in the series. Oh, favorite first book in a series. And... This is hard for me because when I ever, whenever I do these like tag videos, I literally forget every single book that I've ever read. And my other issue with this is that I have a really bad habit, especially since I've started booktube or like getting into the book community of starting series and reading the first book and then never getting on to the second one. Uh, so I guess right now, I feel like all of my answers to this are just going to be based off of the fact that, like, I'm currently reading it, or recently read it, or whatever. Ember's trying to eat my foundation. Um, but I'm currently in the middle of A Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir, and I loved An Ember in the Ashes. I loved An Ember in the Ashes so much, and... A Reaper at the Gates. So A Torch Against the Night was okay. I think it was like a three and a half, four star for me. Um, I really didn't love it as much as I loved the first book, and I loved the first book so much. I blew through that thing. It was so good. Ember, this is really not a space for you. I blew through An Ember in the Ashes. Like, I read that book so fast, I loved it so much, and when I finally got around to picking up the sequel, which is A Torch Against the Night, I did not love it nearly as much as I thought that I would. And then I just recently, I think this past week, I picked up uh, Reaper at the Gates, is what it's called. And I... It's okay, and I don't know if it's because I'm on audio or whatever, um, and I read the first book on ebook, but 
it's just not giving me that same oh my god I'm obsessed with this feeling that I had in the first book like not even close god I've been talking about this for way too long so an ember in the ashes is my answer for this because I adored that first book so 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 much and the second two that I've read have not been as good for me they're still really good books don't get me wrong and I'm really excited to read A Sky Beyond the Storm because I pre-ordered that but you know I just don't love it quite as much fun fact for reasons unknown my camera just stopped recording and missed all of my talking about question number three which is eyebrows. Pick a book that everyone should read or that you think everyone should read. Also, I started my eyebrow already, so I'm not just gonna erase it for the sake of this video. It's just, it is what it is. So I said my adult, like, urban fantasy answer for this is The Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn. The first book is Hounded. There is a talking dog a talking Irish wolfhound named Oberon, and I just think that everybody should become acquainted with Oberon, and I just love the Iron Druid Chronicles so much. If you've seen any videos on my channel, I've talked about Kevin Hearn a lot. Um, my YA answer for this would be uh, the Seven Realms series by Cinda Williams Chima. Chima? I'm not really sure how you pronounce her last name, but I read these, god, probably like six years or so ago now and I just adored them so much from the very beginning. I binged all four books as quickly as I could and I loved every single thing about them. I loved the characters, I loved the magic system, I loved the world building. Um, it was great and recently in this past year I finally decided to <laughs> continue on with the Shattered Realms series, and I don't love it as much, but I do think that if you like YA fantasy, oh my god, that's so uneven, and you haven't read the Seven Realms series, I really think you should give it a shot, because they're great. I don't actually know if it matters for the scope of this video or not, but like after I'm done with my eyebrows I just go through again with a spoolie and like brush it all out so it doesn't look so like dark and weird. Um, and then I take my NYX Control Freak, which is an eyebrow gel, thanks Jinx, and just like make sure everything stays where I want it to. So the next question is concealer, and I use Tarte's Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Light because I like it to brighten up under my eyes. So concealer is pick some characters that you wish didn't exist. I, god, this is a heavy topic, huh? Are there characters that I wish don't exist? I'm gonna have to think on this one while I while I deal with my concealer because I don't know if there's any character that I actively despise because I don't think they serve a purpose at all in the story. I guess I'm gonna go with Tamlin from Akatar. Like I realized the entire first book wouldn't exist without him, but honestly he's trash and we don't need him anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, just, you know, skip right into Akamath where all the good stuff happens anyway. So, I, I guess Tamlin, because I hate that guy. Yeah. We'll go with that. So, the next question is for powder. I don't actually use any powder, um, so I'm just gonna do, like, my, my contouring type stuff that I do, um, in place of this, I guess. And my contour that I use is the Tarte Pro glow to go. I am not good at this. And the question for powder is pick your favorite last book in a series. And I don't know if you guys have ever used Tarte Cosmetics, but like their powder stuff smells so good and I can never get over it. Um, so my favorite last book in a series is... I don't know. I don't like endings, guys. Like, if I'm really loving a series, I don't want it to be over. But I guess if I had to pick one off of just glancing over at my bookshelves and seeing things that are up there, um, I would say Horde by Anne Aguire. Um, I've talked about the Razorland Saga, Quartet, whatever it's called, 
I've talked about it on my channel before. It is probably my favorite YA dystopian in the entire world, and I just really think that it doesn't get enough love. God, makeup gurus are probably, like, rolling around on their... They're probably not dead. They're rolling around wherever they are at my technique, because I don't have one. It's fine. Yeah, so I've talked about the Razorland Saga multiple times on my channel, and... It's my favorite YA dystopian in the entire world. It's kind of like, I don't really know how to describe it. It's not really zombies, but it kind of starts out sounding like it's gonna be zombies. Essentially, the first book, which is called Enclave, takes place far in the future, and I believe it's in New York, but you're like in the New York sewers. And you follow Deuce, who is in a society that after nuclear warfare and all sorts of chemical warfare and all of that stuff, has demolished society as we know it. People were driven to hide in various places, and Deuce is part of a society that decided to hide in the sewers of New York. Sewers and subway stations, I guess. Um, they have not seen the light in decades, if not longer. The highest life expectancy is like 30 years old. Um, obviously they are lacking in vitamin D and very malnourished. I also like to go over my contour powder with a little bit of bronzer just to like spread it out a little bit and uh so she decides that or it's been decided for her she goes into training i don't know to be a hunter for their society they have hunters they have uh builders and they've got like the people that oh breeders they have breeders whose job it is to like breed new members of the society it's very very basic um, and when she graduates as a hunter, she is partnered with, like, an outsider who came to their society as, like, a kid who was, like, feral living in the streets or whatever, um, and nobody really likes him. They don't really accept him because he, he is an outsider, um, but he is a very accomplished hunter and she gets partnered up with him. Stuff happens, they end up, like, being outcast from the society and sent to the surface, and they are forced to survive on the surface that their entire society had believed was, like, still plagued by nuclear radiation and stuff. Um, but they find out that that has been a lie, and that the surface is actually totally fine. The real danger is in- I don't remember what they actually call them, but, like, essentially, because of all the chemical warfare, humans have been mutated into these- like, monsters, and that's their main antagonist. Um, so it's a three-book series. You follow Deuce and, god, what is his name? Fade. You follow Deuce and Fade as they, like, try and navigate life on the surface and try and find safety and all of that stuff, and I'm making it sound so much worse than it is, but I promise you guys, as far as YA dystopians go, it is so good. In the third book, the way that it wraps up in the end, it's a whole lesson in acceptance, and it's just, it's so good. The ending is so good, and I cannot rave about it enough. I reread that trilogy at least once every couple of years just because I love it so much. Okay, so my next step is to put on blush, and they skip over that entirely for like four more questions, so I'm gonna do blush first, and that is pick a book with a cringe-worthy romance. Honestly, there's like so many because I love romance, but let's be honest, as a genre, like a lot of them are fairly cringy. I think that I'm going to have to say, and this saddens me because I do love these books, but I watched the TV show first and I loved the TV show, so I immediately went and got the books and read them, and since I was still like caught up in the TV show hype, I really really loved the, the books at the time too. And then I tried to reread A Discovery of Witches earlier this year, and it just didn't hit the same. The the romance between Matthew and Diana, while I still love those books, and I will always love those books, I just wasn't in the right headspace for it, and so, like, since I'm a big mood reader, if I'm not reading something that I'm in the mood for, I tend to be hypercritical of it, and that happened to me when I reread A Discovery of Witches this, this year. It... <laughs> the, the romance between Matthew and Diana, while I love it, and while I think that it gets better, in following books. It's so insta-lovey and ridiculous in the first book, if you actually go back and think about it, that I, I just, I don't know. It did not sit well, sit as well with me on the reread, so 
yeah, I guess that my answer is Matthew and Diana in The Discovery of Witches because the insta-love was, just, like, literally instant. And I don't know if, like, it's the whole mate deal or whatever, but, like, insta-love doesn't usually bother me that much. A lot of times, honestly, what other people will consider as insta-love, I'll be like, eh, it was fine, whatever. But no, this was, like... This was really quick. I just realized that I did highlighter and there was a question about highlighter. So let's pick a book that brightens your day. And a book that brightens my day is literally any romance because they're just so happy, especially if you're reading the right ones. Like they're they're usually fairly uplifting. Um, so I guess I'm gonna say The Unhoneymooners or Well Met. The Unhoneymooners is by Christina Lauren. Um, I talked about it in a recent video, but essentially you follow the best man and maid of honor from a wedding as they take the places of the bride and groom on a honeymoon because it's non-refundable and they have to fake date and it's enemies to lovers and it's just, it's hilarious for so many reasons. It's so good. And Well Met is about a woman who kind of gets stuck being involved in a Ren fair that she doesn't really want to be in, but she's doing it for the sake of her niece and she ends up falling for the guy who runs the Ren Fair. His, like, family has been running it for years, and he's super, super, in, like, passionate about this Ren Fair for personal reasons. Um, it's kind of enemies to lovers. There's a little bit of fake dating involved. There's a theme in these two, but I don't really love... I do love the fake dating trope. I don't love the enemies to lovers trope, but it is in both of those books, so I don't know if it's growing on me or what. But yeah. So those are my answers. They both brighten my day because they're both really funny and they're both really good. Okay, now we move on to eyeshadow. And I mean, I've got time because obviously all I'm doing is filming this. Um, I use my Morphe eyeshadow. It's like their fall palette type thing. I don't actually know what palette this is called, but it's got like a whole bunch of neutral colors in it. I don't like to get too bold with my eyeshadow. I kind of like to go for like more of a neutral look sometimes. I get a little bit more, like, dramatic than others, but whatever. Um, so the question for eyeshadow is to pick a book with your favorite colors on the cover. Any book with my favorite colors on the cover? That seems to be a little vague. My favorite colors are teal, like a pretty teal blue, and pretty much any shade of green, but mostly like darker greens. So I guess, just judging from what I can see right now, I would say that it would have to be Inheritance by Christopher Paolini, or Ink and Sigil by Kevin Hearn. Both of those have, one is green, one has a very pretty teal cover, or well, teal on the cover. That was a very quick answer for a process that is literally the longest part of the makeup process for me. So we're going to fast forward through the rest of me doing my eyeshadow so you guys don't have to sit here and watch that. Okay, so that took a minute, but I think it turned out okay. That's fine. Um, so for eyeliner, pick a dark and mysterious book. I don't, I guess that's not really specific to me, so it could be any dark and mysterious book. I'm gonna have to think about that one for a second. But my eyeliner that I use is the Stylo Waterproof Stay All Day in black. Um, I do wing my eyeliner, and I can't talk while I'm doing it, so I guess I'm gonna use that opportunity to talk about what book I think is dark and mysterious. So this really isn't where I thought I was going to go with this answer, but I think I'm going to say Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I don't really have a reason for that. I just, I have read it. I've read that and I've read Crooked Kingdom and they just give off like a dark and mysterious vibe to me, especially in the beginning. And I think it's because I went into it without any idea of what the Grisha verse is like. 
like literally no clue and so maybe that contributed to the mysteriousness of everything involved but yeah i guess i'd have to say six of crows by lee bardugo i was gonna say ninth house i guess that answer works too i don't know why i'm on a lee bardugo thing right now but yeah okay that works okay next question is mascara pick a long book i guess this is super easy because i'm literally in the process of reading them but obviously every book in the Stormlight Archive is a really long book. Every single one of them breaks a thousand pages. And they're well known for how hefty each one of them is. Um, so I guess that's my obvious answer. And then my second less obvious answer is Crescent City. Because while it doesn't look very long, that sucker is like 900 pages. And it is way thinner than a lot of the other books that I have that are actually shorter. Um, I think that when I was reading Crescent City, John was reading Priory of the Orange Tree, which is like 800 something pages, maybe 700 something pages. And we put them side by side and I was like, oh yeah, so Priory is definitely way longer than Crescent City is. And then we looked at it and that was totally wrong. So Crescent City has those bible thin pages and is deceptively a super long book which took me less time to read than i actually thought that i was going to need this has extended my makeup process significantly because i don't usually talk when i'm doing these things the last question on this list is lipstick your favorite book kiss my favorite book kiss do i have one favorite kiss in Oh, things are falling. Do I have one favorite kiss out of all of my books? I've read a lot of romance over the years, guys. I don't know that I have one moment that I would pull out of any of them. The blog that I'm pulling these questions off of, oh, I forgot to say in the beginning of this video that nobody seems to know where this tag originated from. Um, the oldest videos I could find were like two years old and there were some blog posts that were like three years old so i guess they're older than the actual videos are i don't know but nobody knows where this came from but i did not make up this tag so credit to whoever came up with these questions originally because it was not me um so anyway the blog that i'm pulling the questions off of says akamath because <laughs> this book has lots of kissing in it so why not and honestly it's not a bad answer because i wouldn't say that this is gonna- I can't talk and put lipstick on at the same time for obvious reasons. Okay, anyway, I'm not gonna say that Farrah and Resand are my favorite romance couple of all time, because first of all, they're not. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Akatar and I will always love Akatar because I just, I do enjoy them as a couple immensely. But there are definitely much better romances out there on the market. Um, I don't think that I can just pick one favorite book kiss. Because I can't pick... It would be like my favorite romance couple finally kissing and I just don't think that I can pick a favorite romance novel in all honesty so I think I'm gonna have to leave this question unanswered just because I love them all. There's not one epic moment in any of them that is standing out to me immediately so I guess I just don't have one which feels weird because I feel like I should have one but I guess I don't so whatever. That ended on a non-answer and I apologize guys but that is it for the makeup and books tag and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! <laughs>